mother taught me a lot about yeah, looking after country. You look after the country and the country will look after you. Yeah, my daughter Sandra and Peter and my grandchildren. They out there help out, helping out burning and yeah, looking after the country. When you go out there in the grass, walk out and just keep an eye out for pigs when you're walking out. They lie under the thick home and acne out there. Okay, before we start, you got your matches? Alright, pull, you know how to light it, then I'll just remind you. Just in case you've forgotten, you always strike downwards and always drop your match on the downside of the fire. Okay, so you don't get trapped. When we burn the floodplains, one of the important things is that we require a lot of wind to actually move the, the fire out across the, the water and remembering the water can be over a metre deep. And so we need the big winds to actually push the fire out over those wetlands and burning before a storm comes is the prime time. So you have this huge driving wind that's coming from the, the storm and then suddenly the rain falls and just puts it all out. It's all over very quickly. It's important to have the whole family involved so that um, knowledge and, and skill is learnt um, out here while we're doing the the practical stuff so it's easier for them to to watch how creatures move and um, how fire behaves with wind and how we can show them how fire can actually burn over over water early in the dry season we we have to put in the early burns around the wetland fringes and that protects uh, the, uh, the the woodland from later fires which, which we would be putting in in say September, October. It's important that we burn the, the woodlands associated with the edges and also the springs that feed into those wetlands so that fires will not travel out later on in the year. Cultural resource management is the key objective of the park. As park manager, I see the Boggy Plains project being the coming together of shared interests. From park's point of view, we're seeking biodiversity outcomes. Aboriginal people living here are seeking a sustainable ecosystem to meet their stewardship or their cultural obligations and for healthy food. Uh, this is the first burn here. You can see where the, the fire is actually going through and burning the dead grass underneath and then it, the new growth is actually burning off and falling and as that falls to the ground and then that'll cure or dry in the next three days and then you can come in and burn that um, the green grass that's fallen down that'll cure for three days and then yeah you can do your second lot of burns then. Early results are showing that um, with the removal of hymenacne off the wetlands uh, we've I think in 2002 we reduced the hymenacne by uh, 40 percent and uh, we had huge increases in other vegetation such as uh, wild rice, uh, nulumbo, nymphaea, all, all the lilies. And um, we had a, a large recruitment of uh, paper barks and other herb species. You can see here, once we started to thin out the native hymenacne, you can see all these other plants starting to come through. Some of the different herbs have come back. And also this grass here, you can see it's a much finer, thinner grass, and that's native rice. And it's a very important food source for the um, young fledgling magpie geese. Uh, once they're old enough to move off the nest, then the adults don't want to um, take them too far to find food. And so um, selecting a, a nesting site is very important to um, to enable them to, to uh, collect um, 
feed very quickly. The major significance in this project is that um, that Aboriginal people really have to take responsibility and and manage their different landscapes appropriately, particularly here in the wetlands where wetlands are continually changing. People have to be up with that change and and move and and manage those wetlands appropriately, not only for the the biodiversity. Um, side of it for, for national parks but also for their, their cultural needs, their sustainable lifestyle to be able to hunt, um, hunt uh, their, their major food sources from here and to be able to do that they have to manage them appropriately. The Boggy Plain project provides a learning opportunity for white fellows such as me provides me an opportunity to see how Aboriginal people use fire. It also allows Aboriginal people to use science to communicate to the world that what they're doing makes a difference. This is really a good example of how joint management can work. Uh, we have a national park, we have uh, park managers, we have Aboriginal people on Aboriginal land. Two different types of outlooks on life, two different sciences, two different ways of doing things. And I suppose this is a, an example of combining all of those differences into one package and not only managing a landscape to suit cultural needs, um, but looking at its, its uh, major outcomes and relating them back to park values. And uh, I, I think this is, this is the way that um, Aboriginal people will be moving towards into the future.